Hi guys. Well, today will uh, probably be, or this week will probably be a relatively short update video for the Lodestar. Um, that's because I haven't had a ton of time to put to it this weekend. I had, uh, let's see, well, I'll tell you about this in a minute, but I had a little field trip I took Friday afternoon, but had to work relatively late. My season's getting busier, busier so those uh, quarter day, half day Fridays are dwindling down. Um, but, so, talk about the field trip later, but, so didn't get any time on the Lodestar on Friday. Saturday, what the heck did I have going? Um, geez, it was yesterday. I don't know how I can't remember this. Um, I had a diaper party for a family friend I had to go to in the afternoon, evening. Um, and something else I did around the house, whatever it was, you know, normal husband, dad duties. And uh, middle of the day, I needed to really put some love to my, uh, my daily driver, my F450, because uh, she hadn't been cleaned on the interior and... I mean, I've sprayed out the floor mats, but it had been since, I think since we went to Florida in December, so two and a half months. Um, so it was time to give the, uh, the old girl Nancy some love. But uh, so got that all done and spotless and beautiful. So, uh, and then did some housework this morning and here we are out in the barns about noon on Sunday and uh, I'm going to get some, oh, I got about three, four hours I can put to the Lodestar here. Then I need to... Uh, actually do some more work to the F450. I got a fender flare to replace, so we're going to, now that the Lodestar can move, we are going to pull that out so I can actually work on the fender flare in the heat, because as much as it's warming up here in Michigan, it is still only about 37 degrees today, so if I can work in 55 degree comfort, I'm going to. So the other thing you might notice is no more of those crazy lines on the phone screen, because you know I'm, I'm not a fancy YouTuber, so I don't have fancy cameras, but I did get a new phone and it has a much better camera and it's not cracked, so that helps. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about what we got to work on this week and then get to work and then we'll do a little update at the end and that's probably about it for this week. And, uh, but I do have some exciting news, so hang tight. So now I can put this camera in fancy ultra wide angle, which really helps in a relatively small barn. So the one thing that you can see that's different here is that. So we got our air cleaner. And I know it's not, obviously, not even a little bit period correct, but it kind of works. You know, I ordered it because of that color. It wasn't red or bright blue, kind of just that whitish gray color, um, which will be difficult to keep clean. But regardless, it, uh, especially with that vertical sit, I mean, it's as good as I'm going to get, quite frankly. I just don't think I'm going to find much of a, you know, an air cleaner can that will work without relocating a whole bunch of other stuff, namely that overflow um, tank. I mean, I could probably mount the overflow lower and, you know, put it down here. So I don't know, in time, we'll see what we come up with, but for the time being that works. Um, so on the list for today, um, really two things for sure I want to get done and we might jump and do something else. But the, the one is finally getting these brakes adjusted properly. I've been an idiot and I know now what I got to do, so we're probably going to tackle that first. And then number two is finally, I got my steering cylinder back. This was 400 bucks, guys. It was a hard pill to swallow. Uh, the problem was, is from sitting, like any hydraulic cylinder that sits doesn't get used, and when, especially when it's got probably dirty fluid with uh, moisture in it, or, or even if it doesn't have moisture in it, it gains moisture from, from sitting and in, in through the seasons. The, um, the cylinder itself, the, the, the rod itself was all pitted, couldn't be saved. So they had to fabricate a new one and then obviously reseal it. So it was not a cheap undertaking, but there's just really no way to, to get around having it on the system. And, um, you know, on top of that, finding a used one, you know, I could probably find one out of a junkyard, but chances are it's going to be shot too. So said screw it i've got this one i know it fits i know it's the right one um let's just get it done so that's going to go on and then we can obviously then put this belt back on and get some fluid added to the reservoir and charge that power steering system make sure everything works there so that time we pull this out of the barn here in two three four hours to make room for the 450 we should have uh power steering and functioning brakes so that brings me to the big surprise so I've been going back and forth on what I want to do. You know, you guys remember me talking about this front axle and having a braked front axle, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I've been mulling over what I want to do. So I have 
I've got a couple options. You know, one is just run it like it is. I just don't think that's viable in the long run. I think we need two braking axles. So um, option one was uh, actually a lot of you guys probably probably watch this channel, but JC Smith um, isn't too far from me. He's a few hours, but but he had a couple options for me. Had reached out to me, and there's there's a potential there, but it's a lot of distance. You know what I mean? And then I had the other factor that I'd, I'd love to get away from these these 20 inch wheels and tires. Um, my rears are in great shape. Those are 1020s. You know, they're, they're probably old. I haven't checked the date codes, but, but there's no dry rotting on them and they've got amazing tread. But the steers are weather checked pretty bad. Those are 920s. I'd actually like to be no larger than 920. I'd actually, I like the look of Lodestar's with more like an eight and a quarter 20 for a light duty like this. I'd love that smaller tire look. Um, but you know, if any of you guys have ever looked for 20 inch wheels and tires, but you know, the tube type, they are expensive and rare. And I just, if I could get away from it, I would. And as many of you probably know on these Dayton wheel spiders, a 22 and a half inch, um, you know, rim, I guess, if you want to call it bolts right up, you know, cause a 20 inch is really, you know, in terms of how it's measured, a 20 is really the same as a 22 five, um, in, in, and for all intents and purposes, basically. So that's just mulling over my options. How can I, how can I get all this taken care of? And then the third thing, which isn't pertinent to the low star at all, is that my wife has a couple goats and some ducks and now she's getting chickens and then she's and turkeys. Apparently I didn't realize this, but uh, I, I'm the last one to find out, but I just have to build the, the shit to put them into. But, um, <sighs> The problem we have is that we have this small little shed where the goats are out back right here behind the barn and there's no room for the hay and straw that they go through. And so, you know, we go like once a month to pick up hay and straw from supplier down the road and it's just a lot of pain in the ass. I'd love to be able to just get a whole bunch and be set for six months or something. So storage comes into play and if you can see where I'm going with this, my brain started going school bus we could get all of this. So my field trip on Friday was there's a junkyard just about four or five miles from home here. And I had seen driving by over the years and then checked him out on Google Earth and he had about 10 or 15 school buses. So I gave him a call about a month ago. Uh, it's been cold and snowy, just didn't have time, was gung-ho to get work done on the Lodestar. So finally, um, Friday, made some time, gave him a call, made sure he was there and went over and took a trudge around. Most of what he's got, he's already using as storage for, for parts. Um, and they don't have motors. They're old as old as heck. We're talking like stuff back from the 60s, early 70s. It's not really what I'm looking for. Most of those were Chevys or you know GM buses or some old Fords. Very few internationals of that vintage. Actually, I don't think he had any, to be honest with you. And then the three he really wanted to sell me was um, he had option one was a... 2001 International 4700 or 4300, whatever it was, with a, let's see, that one had a, I think that one had a T444, which isn't a very desirable engine, um, and it had bud wheels, which I've debated, you know, do I want to swap this axle, the rear axle, and the front, and, and switch over to buds, and I just, I don't think I do. I've put so much, I put so much work into this rear end, and I just like the way this looks. It's period correct, and I want to keep it that way. Um, although I did think that some some five hand hole, ten lug buds painted white would look awesome on this truck, would just look sweet. But we're gonna forgo that. So so that bus just really didn't make much sense. Um, plus, those newer internationals have four inch wide front springs, which doesn't work with my threes. You know, the rear axles bolt right up. Everything's pretty ubiquitous back there. Um, but buses have a much smaller drive shaft and. Um, yokes on them than what I have. So that would have been reworking the drive shaft I just got. So that's just too much work for something we've already got figured out. So, and I'm happy, excuse me, happy with it. So, um, option two was a walked out back and he had a couple sitting next to each other. One was a 99 international, uh, again with the 444 motor. Um, so again, not all that desirable. That one was Dayton wheel. Um, and I don't know what he wanted for those two newer ones, but regardless, I didn't even, we didn't even talk about those because option three was 
uh, had been converted to a church bus, which just means painted poorly. But it was a 88 International S Series with a Thomas built body on it. Just your standard 66 passenger, not the long 72, but just the regular old 66. And had Dayton's with 22 fives and actually a usable set of tires on it. This bus was on the road as of three years ago. Um, has, you know, I mean, it's probably only 40% tread on the drives and a little better on the steers, but they're not weather checked. They all hold air. I mean, they're good usable tires for the time being. And I forgot to check what they are. I think they're 11R 22 fives, but they might, of that vintage, they might be 10Rs, which would be awesome because the 10R 22 five is nearly identical to a 920. So at least they're not getting huge like what I've got on the back here. So I would be happy with that for the time being until I went to a either a 9R or obviously probably wouldn't be a 9R. It would probably be a you know a metric size, a um, little bit lower profile, 22 five. But for the time being, I can literally, I could dismount the tires on that bus and... Um, take those probably what i'm going to do is take the uh the wheels into my tire guy and for 40 bucks a piece they'll send them out to be blasted and powder coated um and i think i'm going to do white because i just think it would look cool and it kind of play off the white on my grommets on my my flatbed and the white and the logo I, just, I think it would it would pop so anyway kills that bird the axle is not perfect but i can make it work um and it's, you know, it's air brakes. Um, you know, I haven't been able to get in the air, obviously, and check kingpins, but we're crossing our fingers that the pins are okay. Um, and so we, we solved the axle problem. We solved my wheel and tire problem. Um, we probably get a few little goodies. Um, we solved my wife's storage issue because I get to be a total redneck and put an old school bus out across the street on my property so we can store stuff in it. And the coolest thing about it is that under the hood of this bus number five i would love to keep the motor but my wife told me it's got to go to 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 pay for the bus uh under the hood is a dt360 little turbo little baby brother to the dt466 international which is actually becoming a pretty popular swap into stuff like super duty pickups um I've, it's in a couple load stars out there guys have been putting them in um ginger auto out in i think they're in california are doing a pretty cool build with the dt360 in their load star um so i think it's actually a pretty marketable engine um low miles you know just a little tiny baby turbo hanging off the side of it um with an allison behind it have not figured out what allison it is um hopefully it's not the at545 but whatever there, there's an allison of some sort that's probably worth you know core core value at any rate but that DT, dt360 i can probably get most of what i'm going to pay for the bus which isn't much back out of it um and then obviously then once i've done all the swap and the wheel work i can sell those drives are actually worth a fair bit of money for the condition they're in and then i've got four or six more uh 920 sitting across the street that are at least worth 20 bucks a piece i found all kinds of farmers that'll buy them for their old their old trucks as spares and then I got these. So um, I think in the end, I'm going to make money on the deal, to be perfectly honest, and solve all my problems. So that's the exciting news. Um, sorry it was long-winded. I'm going to get to work now. We'll be right okay, back. So I'm kind of recording these out of order, but I'll get them lined up in the video. Um, just real quickly, go through with you what I uh, got accomplished today. More than I thought I would, to be honest with you. Um, so we got the air brakes 100% adjusted. They work awesome. To be honest with you, I could probably get by with just the rears, but from a safety standpoint, just in case something, you know, runs up, pulls out in front of me or something, I'd like to have the steers. So, but the rears stop the truck pretty damn good. So they're good to go. Um, got the, uh, um, I removed the PTO cable temporarily. Um, I'm going to actually relocate it and use that same cable, but regardless, it's out of the way for now. Um, got the um, um, steering cylinder all installed. Um, if you can see down there with no light, which you really can't, but anyway, it's on, um, went on pretty easy and then put, uh, put some fluid in the system and it works awesome. Hardly had to bleed it at all. Everything just, just worked great. So that was an easy one. Uh, got the new engine shutdown cable put on. It works, uh, pre-lubricated it. It was a little bit shorter. It was like a foot shorter than the old cable, but so I routed it a little bit differently, but, um, works awesome. Like no effort whatsoever shuts the truck right down so that's a plus um and i guess that's it but anyway 
felt like a lot. So on that note, um, oh, and I've got a little leak, but we'll get it figured out. So anyway, on that note, and poof, we've got a different truck in here. The funny thing is, I think this truck is actually longer than the Lodestar, because I'm, oh, I'm probably about eight inches closer to that little part I got painted there in the front, and I'm about exactly at the same point in the back. If anything, they're about identical, but anyhow, I'm going to get to work on my fender flare that I screwed up in the junkyard getting parts for the Lodestar, and then when I'm done doing this, I might take you guys for a ride in the Lodestar, because it just took its maiden voyage. It only was about three quarters of a mile down the road, but one way or the other, she hit the road. So I'll see if maybe I can get the phone rigged up and take you guys along.